What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday over here. Currently, we do have a weekly candle close as time as the time of this recording. That's coming up in about three hours. Uh, Bitcoin had a pretty good pump this week. Did bring quite a bit of the altcoins up with it. I think it's going to be a pretty exciting week next week because chances are Bitcoin is going to be running into that 28K zone which would be pretty strong resistance uh, from what it looks like here because of the weekly 200, your weekly moving averages, your daily 200. Um, so pretty important to be paying attention to Bitcoin right now because it could affect quite a bit of the altcoins here. We're going to be taking a look into the charts for Bitcoin and see what could be going on just very quickly because I've already done previous two videos on Bitcoin. If you guys are interested in that, do check that out. But the main topic for this uh, for this post would be uh, quant, the quant token QNT and see what's going on in this market. What has gone on since the last time I've talked about this? Has anything changed? Could quant actually break out of its recent downtrend and get some upside, at least in terms uh, for the bulls? Going to be taking a look into some possible upsides and downside price targets for QNT, as well as some key price levels to be paying attention to in order for this coin to go either direction. I'm going to be giving you guys my personal opinions and speculations. I mean, personal opinions and sentiments on this market later in this video. So make sure to stay around for that. Of course, none of what I'm saying here is financial advice. It is not financial advice. It's my, purely my personal opinions and speculations. I could very well be wrong. I am not a financial advisor or uh, nor an elite trader of any sorts, even though I am a profitable trader who's been able to keep most of my profits during the last bear market. And I'm looking to crush it here for the next bull cycle. So if you guys feel the same way, if you guys feel pumped, hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into this video. So right now we do have Quant currently very close to $90. It is down just very slightly today. In my opinion, very little movement, right? What is exactly going on in this market? Now I did bring up, I did talk about this falling wedge that is on the weekly time frame here. So pretty big falling wedge because it's on a higher time frame. Uh, so since the last time I talked about this, I did say a measure target was about 150 bucks area. This measure target is still valid in my opinion because Price action has not yet broken out, and uh, this measurement is still based on a future possible breakout day, okay, uh, which which I put on October, the week of October 9th. I'm not saying it does have to break out by October 9th. I'm just getting a measurement based on a uh, possible breakout day in the future, okay? If it does not break out, and this pattern is still valid, then you're gonna move the measure target, you're gonna move this measurement down along this upper trend line here to get a measure target. That's how you get a measure target, okay? Uh, measure targets are estimates only, okay? It could be over, under. Do your Google searches on what measure targets mean, what falling wedges mean, what a lot of these trading concepts I am talking about mean. Uh, basically, I'm using the technical terms, um, the trading terms. So you can basically, if you don't get something, you can go ahead and Google search it. Um, you know, if it sounds like it's something technical to you, go ahead and Google search it. Chances are you're going to find it and it's going to be free public knowledge. And you're going to be able to educate yourself on technical analysis and be able to read charts for yourself. Of course, it's going to be a pretty long journey, you know, but if you enjoy you know, uh, being in this market and you want to be here for the long run, that's what you have to do, okay? Um, so that is basically what I'm seeing here. Uh, you know, measure target, 150 bucks area is still valid. Let's take a look into the daily time frame here and see uh, if we can get 
any clues on what could be going on on a lower time frame because when I want to see um you know what the price action could be doing in the current time frame I usually look down to a lower time frame and see if we can get any clues are we getting a bullish trading pattern bearish trading pattern so I can increase my accuracy of being right right increase my probability of being right right um so on this on this daily time frame here okay uh what could be happening I don't see a particular pattern right um this is not a falling wedge because this candle wick is just way too long um you know i'm not even gonna chart that because i know it's not gonna be a falling wedge what it looks like here is that it looks like it could be coming down here for a double bottom right that means price action is gonna come a little lower i'm just using a best guess here it's pure speculation okay just based on um you know um you know, just recognizing certain patterns, right? Um, what I think it's happening here is that it could come down for a double bottom. That's a possible scenario. That means price action could come back down here to about, you know, 87, 84 to 87 based on this candle wick here before, um, you know, seeing what happens next. Let's take a look into the four hour time frame and see if that would support um, my argument here, right? So on this four hour time frame here, um, you know, what are the chances of us getting a possible double bottom, right? On the on the daily time frame, that means the price action is going to dip, right? So we do have uh, quite a quite a bit of bearish divergence on this four hour time frame here. That's basically where you're getting a higher high on the price action chart, but equal or higher high on the price action chart, but you're getting an equal or a uh, lower high on the um, on the RSI. Does that make sense? Let me see here. Let me, let me just run that through my mind real quick. Uh, equal or higher high on the, on the price action chart and with, yeah, equal or higher high on the price action chart, but you're getting an equal or lower high on the RSI. That's basically what we're seeing here. You know, higher highs on the price action chart. Um, and then we're seeing equal or lower highs on the RSI. That is bearish divergence, okay? Um, you know, if so if right now the price action is on the 4 hour 50 SMA, if that does not hold, um, you could be, I mean, you're going to be seeing lower price action. Um, let's see if it comes back down to the double bottom here. We do have quite a bit of bullish divergence on this daily time frame, right? Um, so maybe on the higher time frame, this could possibly play out, but it's too early to tell, right? Um, so that's basically what I'm seeing. Um, you know, could this price action form a double bottom or not even form a double bottom and then continue to uh, break out of this? Uh, bigger falling wedge because it is pretty close, right? It is pretty close. That upper trend line there is currently at about $96. So that's pretty close, right? Um, and, you know, as the days, as the daily candles move on, as the days pass by, this upper trend line becomes lower. So, you know, you're very, uh, this, this price action is getting very close. Would this be a swing? Um, that breaks this bigger falling wedge pattern, or this would this be a swing? Um, that basically fails and comes back down here. Uh, we're gonna have to see, right? Um, when this price action, if this price action, if and when this price action goes back up to the upper trend line, um, something I will be looking for is 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 um, is the lower time frame there forming a bullish or bearish trading pattern. Uh, that will increase my probability of being right, right, uh, on either side of the trade. So uh, that's basically what I'm seeing right now. Let's take a look into some key resistances for this price action as well as support. So we're going to go with resistance first. Key resistance is going to be 90 bucks currently uh, because you have your daily 21 SMA there, your blue line here. Next up would be your daily 50 SMA uh, at about 95 bucks area. Daily 200 SMA is going to be outside of that bigger falling wedge pattern currently at about, you know, 105 area, I'm just going to say, because it's going to come down uh, in the next three hours. 
And then you guys can do it for the three day time frame here. Uh, you know, look into moving averages on. Uh, I prefer to do it on a higher time frame because that's more meaningful. That means if you get resistance, if you get sell pressure from these resistances, it will last, you know, a little longer, right? Like daily, at least on the daily, right? You're going to have your three day 21 at about $97 area. I'm just at $97 area. Your daily, your three day 50 SMA, about a hundred bucks area. Your three day 200 SMA, about the $110 area. So quite a bit of um, major moving averages coming down to the price action uh, as resistance, right? Um, Going to be taking a look into some key support as well. Now, do you also note that I'm just pointing out the noticeable key resistances, right? Um, you guys can do the same drill for your weekly time frame, your monthly time frame, and whatever time frame you guys are focusing in on, as well as past trading history on the time frames you guys are focused on. Let's come to support real quick on the monthly time frame here, right? Let's check out some key support right now, right? So key support, first of all, uh, I'm going to look into the monthly time frame for past trading history and see, uh, you know, what are some previous supports? Because that's basically what traders are going to be looking for, uh, like me, right? So first of all, you're going to get some key support here at about the $85 to $90 area, right? Uh, that's going to be coming from, well, you guys can see if you guys come to the monthly time frame here, about $85 to $90 area, uh, quite a bit of support there which we are at, right? If that level does not hold, the next level I'm moving down to would be about, would be about the 70 to $75 area coming from this candle right here, June of last year. 70 to $75 area, that would be the next key support I'll be looking at, which is, Still a pretty good way down, okay? So that's basically what I'm seeing here. Let's see if this price action breaks out on this swing or would it get rejected again and come back down here to the bottom trend line, which could be um, still quite a bit of a pullback. Now let's go, go ahead and go to Bitcoin real quick. Bitcoin here is currently still staying above 27K. Bitcoin is still, in my opinion, bullish right now because we are... Uh, we have been able to stay away from this possible breakdown on this weekly time frame here, this double top right here, neckline. I'm just going to say it's about 24.7K, okay? Um, you have your weekly 50 SMA coming up. That is good news, right? And then more recently on the four-hour time frame here, broke out of this bigger falling wedge pattern on this four-hour time frame. Measure move is going to be about 29.2K area. Will it actually get there? Well, we're going to have to keep charting on the, um, you know, on these lower time frames here and see what kind of signals Bitcoin is giving us, right? But Bitcoin is very important to watch, I think, especially going into next week because it's getting pretty close to that 28K level, right? Um, So I'm going to be paying very close attention as usual, but even more so uh, next week. I am still overall bullish on this market. I am still long on quite a bit of altcoins. If you guys want to see more of quant, do like, subscribe, comment. I will bring you guys an update if enough of you guys want to see it. That's it for this post. That's it for this weekend. I hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend. And I'll see you guys next time.